Hello sellers. I've gone to my leftover binding box and picked out some binding to put on the bottom so that those people who want to bind can actually see how to do it. You could also use your binding for this edge instead of having to turn it out. You can have a binding around that edge too. So first of all I've chopped a piece off and I'm going to make what will be the loop with that one so I'm just going to fold this into the center and press it it's been curled up for a long time Stick that end. do the same with this side And fold it back together again. Now if you don't want your loop to be that thick you can make it smaller but I'm just um, using the binding just folding it in half and folding it over and I'll make it reasonably long so that I know I can fit it over my tea towel rack. So all I need to do now is sew down the side <coughs> and I can trim off excess after I'm still using the blue thread so that hopefully you can see it. Um, ordinarily I would use a matching thread. Now you don't need to do the folded side but I just did that so that it matches. So now we've got this and we're just going to, oops, missed a bit there. That happens. We go back. That's because I was trying to get close to the edge. Oh, that's better. Now I found a couple of um, different bindings that I thought would be okay but I like the brighter one. So I've trimmed a piece off. It was just left over so I thought that was a good idea to use my leftovers. I've checked to see how long I need it. I'm going to sew from the inside and then turn it out. And I've folded over about a centimetre at the end. And I'm not going to start right there where that fold is. I'm going to start a couple of centimetres or an inch or so down here and I'll increase my stitch length a little bit to three I think should be okay because there are a few layers here and then I'm going to stitch around and then slip this end in there, trim off the excess. So I've got clips on there Now I'm going to sew this way around, which would be the way you would have to sew if you didn't have a free arm. So you can see how to manipulate it if you didn't have the free arm. So starting in about an inch and I'm going to back stitch and just take it round. Um, Slightly more than a quarter inch I'm doing. And I'm going to have a little bit of a pleat on this where the um, the shape of the, the mitt changes. It's not straight, but I'm not worried about that. I'm just finishing the edge. That was my really thick seam again. So 
you can see I'm just manipulating this to go around matching it with the edge of my foot and I, I changed the needle position so it's it's not on the quarter inch but a little bit more have to lift this up to make sure that my thick seam is still facing the same way it was before because we don't want to twist that seam. Take it slow over that thick seam again and you can see here there's the end where I want to tuck this one in. I'll just get rid of those long threads. So what I'm going to do I'm going to check how much I need. Let's say about there. Trim that off. And I'm going to take a little bit off there so that it's not so hard to poke in. So I've taken a little piece from the edge to make it a bit skinnier. Now I'll test that, slip it in, I may not have cut it short enough, see how we go, not quite short enough, I need to cut just a little bit more off, because it needs to come in far enough that um, it'll almost meet that last stitching, so I'm tucking it in there and fold that one over the top of it that I had there before. If you can use something to help you pop it in there. You need to watch that it doesn't go past the stitching you've already done. If that happens you will get a bit of a pleat and it's not a disaster. There's going to be a couple of pleats in this one anyway just because of the shape. So I'm heading back to where I started. Back stitch. And that end is caught in there. Now stitch that on the inside as I said. And that little sliver that I took out of there came from just here so it's not sticking up there and it was easier to poke that bit in. So now what we do is we turn this out. There's the inside and turn that out. I'm going to give it a little press. Oh you know what I forgot to do don't you? I forgot to put my loop in but that's okay I can put it in on this side. Either way is good. So this is where the mini iron comes in handy. And get it in there. Don't worry if it's not um, a really, really good press. Just a bit of a press to help you get it round is what you want. And you will have a couple of little tucks probably where it changes shape. Now, I'm not doing anything with this bit here where I've poked it in. So we're going to turn it, folding it over like a cuff and at this stage I'm not sewing there where that join is. Now that might sit nicely there, we'll soon find out. If you feel the need to pop a couple of clips in if you think it's going to move around too much but it sits pretty well now I'm going to put one over here now I'm going to start after that so that as I come around and finish I can slide up what I need to from there and you can choose with your loop I'm going to chop a piece of that off because it's a little bit long. 
with your loop you can choose to have it on that side or on the side where the thumb is now I'm going to put mine on the thumb side because when you've got your hand in that loop might just have a chance of catching something in the oven so I'm going to put that in here there's my thick seam just here and I'm going to put the loop on the other side of the thick seam not on the same side tuck it in clip it and it'll be in the right place when I want to go do it now I've got a little bit more thickness there so I'm, I'm going to increase my stitch to three and a half just to give me that little bit of um, well makes it a little bit easier when you've got a bigger stitch put it that way now I need to move my needle back to the center of my foot because I have moved it across a little bit okay that's good and I'm going to attempt to sew best not to start right on that um, seam I'm going to sew as close as I can to this top edge again with my blue still so you can see it back stitch and don't try and go fast now straight away we're going on to one of those seams one of those wide seams so just take it slow and then we can go a little bit faster Coming up to our loop, I'm going to need my needle down so I can do a little bit of manipulation here. Grab my purple thing or my stiletto, whatever I've got handy. Today it was the purple thing. I'm just going to leave that clip there for the moment, using my purple thing to keep that flat. There is a little tuck which you won't really notice much, but I'm going to try and keep it under the needle because this is where my really thick seam is, so it's slightly less. Good, now we're up to our loop. Now I'm going to back stitch when I've gone over the loop. So now I'm going to back stitch because that does take a bit of wear and tear. And go forward again. Now we're heading up towards the end and I'm going to keep an eye on that to see if I can make it reasonably neat. So if I poke that a bit and pull this a bit, hopefully it won't look too bad in the end. stitch at the end and trim those threads now inside you'll see that line of stitching and that's why I've done this on the outside so that I've got more control over how neat it is so that's not too bad I'm hoping you can see so that was just a piece of leftover binding from another quilt. There's my loop. 
it's in quite tight I'll be able to hang that up on my tea towel rack and that edge is finished now you don't have to do that the zigzag or the overlocking will cope now here's where I did that little slide in now you can stitch that by hand if you like things to be really neat or you can grab some glue baste it losing my lid and just squeeze a little bit in there can't tell there we go on either side so just inside there I'm getting it everywhere where it shouldn't be I'm just going to wipe off the excess with my fingers I'll just squeeze that for a minute to help it adhere and then I'm just going to pop the iron on it to dry it on both sides now what I put underneath came in about that far so when I wash it if I find that that's a problem I can then go back and give that a stitch but at the moment that looks quite good so as I said you could do away with having this seam on here and you could trim your seam right back here and put binding on that so that's how you can put your your binding on similar process to doing um, you know your little um, hot pads and things like that thank you for watching